Hi all, Justice Social Paintball, and here are a few of my favorite things about the Die Assault Matrix Marker. The obvious, it can run mag fed, or it can run hopper fed, and they provide the parts to cover up the hole if you're not running with your feed neck, so the feed neck's provided, and you actually have a cover plate that's provided as well. So, you can run either or mag fed or hopper fed, and you can run both. <laughs> so that's the big the big difference. You don't have to choose either or you can with the quick slide of the switch switch from the mag fed to the hopper fed or on the switch slide back. One important thing that you might want to consider is buying one of these right away. Things like this scope, this quick um, spot scope are only going to be available with the first run here. So you should get on and order this right away. If you plan on buying it, buy it before Christmas, uh, buy it as soon as possible so you can get the first batch and get the scope for free. Um, you don't want to wait and then have to buy that later on. So that's, that's another good feature of, of getting right on this marker and getting the first batch. Um, there are multiple colors, another nice detail, multiple tactical rails, you can put anything you want on here. Now, you know I'm a kind of a devil detail kind of guy, and I like to point out little things in design that I think can make the difference. Um, so dye, if you, if you look at this product, it has done a great job of providing good iconography all over the product. Here it has a little icon for the first strike, that's for MagFed, it has a little icon for 68 caliber, just a nice design detail. I know it seems little to some of you guys, but I think it's a kind of a nice detail that uh, shows that a company really cares when they go to that, that length. The magazines themselves have the same kind of iconography on them. Um, and you can shows you which way to load the first strike round, which is a big thing. Um, some magazine fed systems, it's actually possible to load the first strikes in backwards. And uh, again, when you start flipping these things around <laughs> to load them, if you've got them, you know, it might be easy to get them backwards. So little things like that, that make a big difference. Thinking about everything, uh, thinking about the player and having players doing design is I believe the strength of this system. But another uh, detail, let me just eject this magazine. There's a uh, ambidextrous button. So whether I'm left or right-handed, I can easily get this magazine out. Um, so again, another detail, let's not leave out the lefties out there. There's plenty of them. Uh, one of them is my best friend and he shoots me in the head often. And if you want to, you can pick up actually kit they have to lock these together. So you can, you can quickly have two magazines ready to flip around between the two. And those are extra clips. I don't have one here to show you, but that's another detail that's available and something you might want to pick up uh, when you buy this marker. So this cardstock is an excellent product um, in itself. Excellent materials. It's lightweight. It is all composite. They didn't put metal in here to keep it, keep it uh, light. There is a little compartment there you can put some tools in, which is a nice thing to have. The operation of this marker is also a nice simple detail. You have a simple power button here, and then you have a firing mode selector between three different modes. And then you can actually set, um, you can turn your eyes on and off with one button. If you have a problem with your eyes um, gunking up, you can just go ahead and shut them off and keep going, keep rolling. So that's nice and handy to have, especially for those all day games that you'd play with this kind of marker. The programmability is, is basically just like any other DM. Uh, if you look in the manual, all the modes are there. It's um, pretty remarkable. So here I can just pull with my hands and I can open this grip and I can replace my battery. So sure, this isn't mechanical and electro like some other markers, but it's pretty damn easy to get in that battery and replace it. With the car stock, I just want to point out something that I'm really excited about. The product's not out yet, but you can tell it's coming at some point. When you go for a kind of a more realistic kind of setup, um, you don't want to have a tank kind of hanging out the back saying, hey, I'm a paintball marker. So the ASA is nice to have to begin with, but if you're going to run mag fed games only, you're going to want some kind of uh, gas through the stock option. Of course, you can do a remote line right off the bat, but die, if you look in the manual, um, and you look at the marker itself, there's actually a back plug on here for future expandability to have a gas through stock option. I don't know how they're gonna do it. I don't know what the stock's gonna look like. I don't know if you have multiple stocks, but it's there for future upgradability and Dodd's thought about it, which is a nice thing because I don't wanna necessarily run with that tank. So here's one of my most favorite things about this marker, which is the engine. Very innovative, very nice. You've got the back cap that's magnetic. You can pull that out, it has the textured grips on it. So you can unscrew this with your hands, get this out. If you have a leak or problem with your spool valve, you could actually pull this right out. You can maintain them right out in the field. I've done it before. It's, it's uh, definitely gonna be a lot easier with this back cap, unscrewing that. And you might have to have some lube with you, big deal. And if you're running all day long, that could be an important thing because the spool valve, I believe is superior, definitely because it's a quieter shot. It's more accurate and consistent.
And I love the fact that I have an inline regulator. So this is actually the regulator here on the back. Let me unscrew this for you. I'm gonna pull out the front bolt here, the bolt assembly. So housed in this back section here, you have a place where you can grip on there with, uh, put a wrench on there so you can more easily get this apart. The regulator's in line behind the bolt. So you're not wasting space somewhere else in the marker for the regulator. All your service takes place in one spot. And in terms of spoolies, on the non-moving O-rings, I put on a thicker lube. And on the ones that move on the bolt, I put on a thinner lube. And the most important ones to service on your spool valve are gonna be your front um, bolt O-ring here. And I'm just gonna pull this out for you. This center one, which is red on the die here, that's really where a lot of your problem, almost 90% of your problems occur, is that ring needs to be replaced here and there or lubed. So that's your bolt service, pretty easy to do, pretty easy to get apart. If you wanna take this whole thing out, you just remove that front, front O-ring and you can pull this out and um, re-lube everything. Final detail that I really like that's apparent in the design is being able to remove the front shroud in these two sections, all the tactical rails at once by getting rid of essentially three screws, one on top, the front grip screw to take the front grip off, and then one screw identical to this under the front grip, and you can remove both sections of the front shroud and all the tactical rails and shed a lot of weight. So let's take a look at that. So in kind of its stock configuration, if you're gonna run with a hopper, let's take a look at the weight real quick before we take it apart. Five pounds, 2.6 ounces. So let's take it apart. Okay, so we've reached the stage in the disassembly point where we've taken off the forward shroud with the tactical rails. I uh, showed you all those rails do come off independently or they can just be uh, taken off with the shroud in two separate sections or one big section, kind of however you prefer to get that off as quick as possible, which is a nice design feature that Dai has thought of ahead of time, knowing that some of you might wanna just shed a lot of weight and use this for playing um, tournament style. It'd be nice to be able to use a four, you know, this $1,400 marker to be able to use it for a tournament or at least you know, a rec ball kind of speed ball. Um, as well as your tactical configuration, and they're so close. They're really only a couple things holding it back. So one would be how do you develop a cover for this section here? So this brings me to my suggestion as I was working and looking with this. Um, let me just take this um, foregrip piece. If this foregrip could be retooled in such a way, and it, it looks like it's pretty possible, just, just the raw dimensions of this. If it could be redone, um, to function as the eye cover and as a replace, you know, a piece that you could put over to replace the magwell, um, that might be an easy solution for the next version of the dam or something like that. Second suggestion for die, I'm just removing the um, grip a little bit here so you can see that this uh, grip frame, very much like the ultralight, um, is is all one piece here as if this trigger guard could be swapped out detach it from here as well as from up here and then you don't need this slide bar this could come out which and maybe it comes out as part of this coming off and then you put on a new trigger guard and you could swap out a trigger pot potentially so those are my two um, hopefully helpful suggestions i'm sure they're things that have been talked about and kicked around but just wanted to um, show kind of how far you can get this down towards losing weight for a tournament configuration. So, so another clue Dai has thought about this is I noticed with this uh, front piece on the shroud, this plastic piece you can take off off the very end, the most forward section of the shroud, just take that off and you can go ahead and slide that right in on this shorter configuration. And uh, I got it down as much weight as I can off it. Dye's done a great job of allowing those options. So I've got the feed neck, put that front cover plate on, this is the barrel. We're ready to rock with some speed ball here, and we're a couple pounds lighter. 
So I got a little nitpicky there, but I, I thought it was worth doing because we we're getting so close to one marker to rule them all. And if you're somebody who plays rec ball, woods ball, scenario, and speed ball, uh, different formats, all formats of the game, uh, I think this is the marker to go with. Having the first strike option, mag fat option, you're just going to be able to play so many different formats of the game, all with one marker, with an excellent engine that's going to be precise, it's going to be consistent, going to be quiet, and is going to definitely have future upgrade ability. So, um, I definitely give it high marks. I can't wait to get out there and play with it, give you more of a full review, hopefully. I'm not sure it's going to happen for a while. Winter's coming here, and there's no, there's nobody open, so um, I'm going to have to wait. It just really sucks, uh, but I hope you all get this, and all of you in warmer climates, get out there and use it, and I'll be watching your videos about what you the damage that you could do with this marker. So thanks again for your time. Thanks, Di, for providing this, and have a happy holiday season. Take care. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check us out at socialpaintball.com, your source for the latest editorials, paintball videos, and commentary. Also, be sure to check us out at facebook.com, facebook.com slash socialpaintball.